Now, the constructions that we illustrated all have short cycles. But this famous guy that I've referenced several times, Paul Erdős, many years ago, proved that you don't need them. All right, so I just want you to look at the statement of this theorem. For every pair of positive integers, G and T, with each of the integers at least three, there is a graph whose girth is exactly G and whose chromatic number is exactly T. Exactly. So think about what such a graph, with girth being 100. The smallest cycle is 100. If you're standing on a vertex and looking around you, all you see is a tree. Yeah, I go out on this path, go out on that path, go out on this path, go out on that path. I don't see any way to get back because I can't see that far. In order to, to get back, I have to go out at least 100. So locally, it looks like a tree. Locally, it's very, very easy to color. But globally, it's not. You can make the chromatic number anything you want it. Now, many of you are probably thinking, uh, like one of the characters in the book, oh, I went to Georgia Tech. I paid all this money to learn about graphs and girth and chromatic number. Who cares? What is the point? Well, history will record that this proof, this little result, is the birth of one of the most important topics in computer science. And it is widely studied and widely used. This is the birth of randomized algorithms. This is the birth of the probabilistic method. Erdős did not construct this graph. He showed that it exists using random methods. Let me be a little explicit about how he did this. So you give Erdős the numbers G and T. He thinks about it, and then he comes back and he says, I'm going to give you a value in. That value n that he gives you depends on g and t. And he says, now, make a vertex, make a graph as follows. Put down the vertices 1 to n. And I've told you what n is. Those are the vertices. And then you say, OK, I got it. I got it. I got it. I, I got my UGA friend here. He can put down n vertices. He's got it. Now, tell us how to put the edges. And then there it says, well, I'm not exactly going to do that. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a dial. This dial is going to be a spinner. You know what a spinner is. You play, no, you, no, you guys don't play these games. When I was a kid, we played games. And, and you, have, you have a dial. It's got like a clock. It's got a hand. And you go. Oh, you can't see doodly. Sorry. You got a, you got a, a spinner here, and you, you take your finger, and you go wham like that, and it goes Wheel of Fortune. You must have, no, you don't remember Wheel of Fortune. Donna White, no, you know, Van, no Vanna White. You, you're too, too young. Okay. So you hit this spinner, and either you put in edge or no edge. And now, we're, so Erdős is going to give you the spinner. He, he's going to carefully control the sizes of those regions. And he says, here's what you do. You go to the edge in your graph. You've got your vertices 1 to n. Now, pick up any pair, say the ith one and the jth one, and play the game with the spinner. ka -chung! It goes around, around, around. If it lands in there, put the edge in. If it lands out here, don't put the edge in. So it's now not a deterministic process. 
It's a randomized process. So there is no control over the graph that comes out. You can have an incredibly lucky day, and every time you hit the spinner, it lands in there. What graph do you get? The complete graph. Well, that's a big chromatic number, but it has girth three. Now, you could be out here every time. Could be, it could happen. And so, in that case, there'd be no edges. The girth is infinite, and the chromatic number is one. But here's the beauty. Eridus shows you that the probability that you get what you want is positive. And if the probability is positive, then the graph you're looking for exists. You may not be able to find it, but it exists. Actually, the proof says more than that. It says if you make it just a little bit bigger than what you really need and do this randomized process, you will almost surely get a graph whose girth is bigger than what you need and whose chromatic number is bigger than what you need. Almost surely. Not, not with 100% probability, but almost surely. So close in probability to one that you would bet your life on the end result. You would bet your life. And you do each and every day. Because randomized algorithms that behave just like this are part of our world today. There are randomized processes out there that are working, doing things for us, and they're not deterministic. Somewhere underneath the hood, there's somebody playing games with, well, they're, they, of course, it's not a mechanical spinner. There's some random number generator. There's something and a randomized process is taking place, and things are happening. And this original paper of Erdős, going back to 1959, is generally cited as being the birthplace of it all. So, chromatic number, girth, these are historically, they remain very important topics. And the general concept, those of you who go on and take junior, senior, or maybe even graduate level courses, you will see this again. You will see this probabilistic method. It is the standard technique in high level computer science courses. OK, I actually have a little more material, but I don't want to do it. I'm looking at the clock. I've got three or four minutes, and I, I want to say a couple of th things to you about the test that's going to happen on Thursday. Uh, I've got office hours today at 11. I'll, I'll certainly be available. I leave this afternoon for Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm on an NSF panel. And while you are having an enjoyable day, even taking this test will be more fun than what I'm doing. I'm going to be locked in a room. For three days, it will be horrible. But somebody has to save our nation, and it's my turn. I'm going to sort out the political mess while I'm up there, uh, too. You know, me and the Donald are like this, you know. No, we're, no, we're not. <laughs> OK. Um, so I'm going to hold office hours today. I, I, I will not be available on, on Wednesday. My PhD student, Rudong, will be here uh, to administer the test and, and collect them. Uh, please be prepared to show identification uh, when you come to, to take the, the test on Thursday. I've given you a list of topics, but I want to say this about preparing. Here's what I would do that's more important than I think anything else. I would take 
the PowerPoint slides, the PDF versions of the slides, and I would I'd go thump, 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 through them. I'd punch through those, and then I'd say, what problems have been assigned? What problems are on the test which look just like the things in lecture? Because Trotter said to us, there aren't any surprises. If we talk about it, it's important. So I should expect the things that are represented in the lectures to be on the test, and those are the things I want to be 100% prepared for. So expect that when you come on Thursday. And expect one of everything. Okay? Good luck, and I'll see you. Oh, as you're headed out the door. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you head out the door, uh, I, I'll collect your homework papers. <laughs> <laughs>